This is me again, Jeff the Pharaoh. I was going to make a quick video and just throw in a bunch of weird stuff. This photograph you see, that is my stepbrother or former stepbrother, Joseph Pachetian, better known as Tattoo Joe. He was a martial artist, tattoo artist, biker. Okay, he's not around no more. He was murdered in... Uh, 1982 unfortunately so anyway this is me and we're going to talk about this guy because i think some of you people might actually be interested to know what he was all about and his guy was funny and this guy did some crazy stuff back in the 1970s i'm going to tell you about it and by the way i just finished painting my shotgun Whoa. Uh, this is not, I'm not threatening anybody, I'm not no terrorist, I'm not a kook uh, It's going to be uh, going out trying to kill folks and all that stuff, so don't get me wrong. I was actually trying to go for the camouflage thing, uh, desert, unfortunately it turned out to be woodland. Yeah, you know, maybe this kind of thing would have been kind of cool in a place like Chechnya or something, or Vietnam, I have no idea. I really did a shitty job on this, so... Uh, there's my uh, shotgun. Anyway, we're going to talk about this guy for a moment. And um, the picture that you saw was Joe. Joe came into my life uh, along uh, with his dad, uh, Bernie. Oh, 1973. And Joe was, uh, he just came back from, I don't know where he went. He came overseas from... I believe uh, from Hong Kong or something. I'm not really sure. Anyway, uh, I was in a biker family, and Joe, being the oldest son, he was a bit of a wild man. We're talking about a guy that was six foot four, about 280 pounds, and a great martial artist. Very, 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 very badass dude. Very, very tough. Um, he's been studying martial arts ever since he was a kid. So. At the time, he was 19, 20, maybe. And he already held uh, two black belts. So he was very, very tough. Um, what I was going to talk about is uh, we used to live in Burbank, California at the time. 19, what the hell was it? 1975. And, of course, by this time, Joe was... Barely old enough to drink, but that didn't stop him from drinking or trying to drink, and he drank. And he loved to party because we were in a biker family at the time. So his dad was a biker. Joe wanted to be a biker. He gave up the entire martial art thing after he closed down his school in early 1975 before the, the story I'm going to relate to you. Uh, you guys already heard the story of my uh, Crazy Eddie. Um, Joe, on the other hand, he was pretty funny. Um, this guy was a, this guy was classic. I mean, he had a great sense of humor. He was a great tattoo artist. His tattoos were just unbelievable. I mean, we're talking about a multi-talented guy. And that guy can tattoo. He tattooed my mom. He tattooed my stepfather. He tattooed my step brother he stat tattooed uh, uncle richie uh, and about maybe a dozen other bikers over the course of the next three or four or five years six years um he even tattooed ozzy osborne he gave one ozzy osborne one of his earliest tattoos around 19 i think 77 or 78 so, um, yeah, and don't laugh. I actually got a chance to meet Ozzy while he was getting tattooed. Um, Joe was tattooing him in our, uh, in our kitchen. And uh, I believe the other guy was Tony Iommi, but I just can't remember that far back. But I definitely remember this story. And I'm going to tell you about this story. And, uh, oh, wow, there's a message. Please show booze. Oh, wow. Okay, so we got comments early for not even Q&A. Anyway, so one night um, in our neighborhood was a pretty rough neighborhood in Burbank. I mean, who says that Burbank is rough? Some of the people are going to go, are you kidding? But we're talking about the mid-1970s. And um, 
just about, I think, eight or nine houses up the street from us. On the right-hand side, we lived on a place called Will, um, Winchester uh, Street. And Winchester goes this way and San Fernando goes this way. And we lived almost barely on the corner, just one house over from the corner. And uh, Joe wanted to get some alcohol. He's like, oh, wow. And the cops, about eight houses up, uh, this is uh, like 10 o'clock at night, 10, 10 or 11. You know, I was way past my bedtime. And there was a police car up there, and they were doing checking out a house, some sort of disturbance, something was going on, the neighbors were fighting or some whatever kind of madness. So Joe says, you know what? I don't got any more Jack Daniels. I got to go buy some Jack Daniels. So Bernie would not allow him to drive his truck. So Joe goes out the front door, goes over to his 1964 Plymouth Fury flat tire. How in the hell did he get a flat tire? He comes in, he's going, oh shit, man, I got a flat tire. So I'm sitting there and I was 14, maybe 14 years old. So Joe says, you know, I'm just going to have to go, I'm just going to have to go and just go to the liquor store that's up on the corner. The corner liquor store was way over here by uh, where the old um, Safeway used to be. Right up there on Glen Oaks Boulevard. So it's like, oh, okay, you know. And um, he was gone for about 15 minutes. So I happened to go outside late at, you know, at that time, after about uh, 20 minutes, I would walk outside in the front yard. And um, I had my bike bicycle chained up, so I was going to unchain my bike and move it in the back. And I see this police car come pulling up about six houses away, facing this way. Stopped, got out, and it was Joe. I was like, what the, what the hell? So he pops open all the doors, all four doors, opens the trunk and opens the, uh, the hood and keeps the lights shining, and he comes walking up. And I'm like, what the hell? And he walks right inside the house. And I said, what did you just do? He says, well, the cops were not using their car, so I took the car and drove it to the ga to, up to the liquor store and uh, got some Jack Daniels, turned around and drove it back and parked it this way instead of that way. The car originally, what he told me later on, was parked this way, up the, pointing up the street. He turned around and parked it this way. So he goes in, and he just starts laughing. He sits down, he breaks open his Jack Daniels, and uh, he pours himself a glass and starts drinking. About 10 minutes later, I see flashlights everywhere. So I look out through our side window, past the driveway, I'm looking, and there are the cops, both the police officers, shining their lights inside the police car and shining them around the houses. Apparently, they didn't like what was going on. But, you know, nothing was missing, I guess. So, they called another police car. Another police car shows up. And they start flashing lights around them, all around the other houses. So they started knocking on the other houses. By this time, Bernie went to bed. He went to go, you know, her and my mom went to bed. And Joe went to the back room, back to his room, and he started drinking and listening to his... Uh, Grand Funk Railroad albums. Oh, and here's the girl we're talking about. They're saying, let's see some boobs or something. Well, there you go. That's a pretty hot looking elf, isn't it? Anyway, so they came up and knocked on the door. After about another half hour, and here's little old 14 or 15 year old me, open the door and say, yes, officer. Oh, uh, yeah, um, um, is your dad in? Uh, my stepdad's asleep. Oh. All right, well, did you see anything funny happen? Have you been up all... He says, oh, I'm on my way. I'm going to go to bed right now. He says, okay, did you see anything suspicious? Did you hear anything going on? I said, no, uh, why? What's going on? He says, uh, don't worry about it. And uh, that was it. I closed the door, and they went on to the next, uh, the last house, and then walked back, and then, you know, I turned the lights off, but I continued to look out the window. And um, after about another 15 minutes, both the police cars turned and drove away. So that was a pretty, that was a pretty friggin' uh, funny thing, you know. And uh, I've remembered that for the last 
forever. You know, I might got bad memories, but I mean, uh, you know, bad, you know, the old brain box may not be as sharp as it used to be. But I definitely remember that day, that evening, actually, of Joe taking the police car to the liquor store to get some Jack Daniels. This guy was notorious for doing insane crap. Another thing that he did, uh, I got about another two minutes left on this video, is one day the Goodyear blimp was flying over our other house that we lived in in Highland Park. We eventually moved back to Highland Park from Burbank. Goodyear blimp is coming over our house. We're up on the hill. We got a house up on the hill. And that crazy son of a bitch started laughing and he says, you want to see something funny? And I was like, yeah, why? What are you going to do? He goes in the house, grabs his 30-30 Winchester, walks out in the back of the yard and fired six shots. Boom, 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 boom at the Goodyear blimp just right above us. And he went boom, 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 boom. You know, he fired like six shots. And you see the Goodyear blimp starts turning more rapidly, trying to turn away faster. Because, you know, I mean, the Goodyear blimp is way up there. But, you know, this guy is firing bullets. You know, and a 30-30 has pretty good range because the 30-30 the caliber bullets were uh, more modernized than it was back in the 1800s. So after he started laughing and we go back inside, he puts the gun away. And about roughly 15 minutes later, you hear police cars driving all over the place. Just woo, woo, right by the house, going up the street, coming back down. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> oh boy, this guy, dude, he's just sitting there listening to the police cars, laughing his ass off. He says, God, I miss this guy. He was, he was, a, he was a pretty freaking cool dude. And, uh... I would tell you more, but uh, the rest of it's pretty tragic, and I don't think I want to do a tragic video. So anyway, this is Jeff DeFerro. A ah, little bit of reminiscing about this guy, Joe. And uh, rest in peace, brother. Whoa.